The fourth dogma of Our Lady is that at the end of her earthly life, we, she was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. This is the dogma of the Assumption of Our Lady, defined by Pius XII on November 1st, 1950. Now note, these four dogmas all talk about Our Lady's relationship to Jesus and talk about her nature as given by God. Glorious and powerful truths. But there's something missing. What about Our Lady's relationship to you and to me? What about her relationship given to her by Jesus as the last gift of Jesus to humanity before he died? And that tells you the value of this gift. This is the last gift from Calvary. Behold your mother. What about her relationship to humanity? That is the fifth doctrine of the church, and it is already a doctrine of the church, repeated by popes and saints and mystics endlessly. It is this that Our Lady wishes to become the fifth and the final dogma. That means solemnly defined by our Holy Father. But we'll talk about why a dogma. If it's already a doctrine of the church that we're all bound to accept, why a dogma? And we're going to see that God so loves you and me that he does not evoke, he does not, he does not presume, that, nor does he impose on our freedom. He does not force his mother upon us. He does not force grace upon us. He doesn't even force salvation upon us. We have to choose, and it must be proclaimed freely on our part. So let's examine the three ways that Our Lady is spiritual mother to you and to me. First of all, she is the co-redemptrix. And let's examine this title closely, because this is the most controversial title of Our Lady, not controversial in the history of the Church. Uh, she was called co-redemptrix for the first time in the 14th century. St. Catherine of Siena called her the Redemptrix of the Human Race. The Fathers of the Church called her the New Eve. St. Irenaeus in the second century said Mary is the cause of salvation for herself and the whole human race, always with and under Jesus. Nothing new about this, my friends. What does the doctrine mean? John Paul II called Our Lady the Co-Redemptrix on six occasions as the Vicar of Christ on earth. What does that title mean? Well, the, the word itself, co-redemptrix, uh, has two aspects to, to it. Uh, the co comes from the Latin word cum, which simply means with. Redemptrix is a feminine form of the verb redemptor, to redeem or buy back. Uh, what does the word mean etymologically? It means the woman who buys back with. Or the woman with the Redeemer. Now, if you've never heard the term before, and you'd say, all right, now what woman is closest to the work of salvation? What woman added more than any other woman to the unique work of Jesus Christ? I don't think you'd have a blank mind. This is not a very challenging question. Who competes with the mother? Mother Teresa put it uh, boldly, and, and even started laughing as we talked about this on August 14th of 1994, when we were talking about the definition. I went down to Calcutta, and Mother said, well, of course she's the co-redemptress. She gave the body to Jesus, and the body of Jesus is what saved us. I said, Mother, now that's the difference between a saint and a theologian. It takes you 30 seconds to summarize, but it takes us books to write. She simply said, of course, of course she's the co-redemptress. And indeed, as soon as Our Lady says yes, as soon as she gives her fiat, she brings the world its redeemer. But my friends, it doesn't stop there. Mary is not the co-redemptrix only because she gives birth to Jesus. She's the co-redemptrix as every classic medieval Madonna portrays. She's the co-redemptrix because she suffered with him in ways that John Paul II said were almost unimaginable for the human being. The sufferings of Our Lady were so intense are almost beyond our imagination. How did she suffer? Uh, I remember one student years back saying, well, you know, our mother, I mean, she had it pretty easy. She had one kid and he was God. So how many discipline problems would she have? 
Uh, this is to grossly <laughs> underestimate the task of the COVID editors. She has, from the moment she says yes, an awareness of who she's bringing into the world. Mm -hmm. She's bringing the God man into the world. She's bringing the suffering servant of Isaiah into the world. And what does Isaiah say about the suffering servant? He says, he will be so disfigured, so beaten upon, so spit upon, so scourged, that he will be unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. So this, when this 15-year-old virgin is saying yes, a virgin who was educated in the temple, she knows what this means. She's saying yes to bring the world a savior that will be in a historic and monumental way offered as an immolation. And a mother's heart is connected with her child, especially during times of suffering. There was a, a gentleman on, on a radio program we were doing uh, about a year ago who called in, he said, is Corey Hendricks a uh, title? This is easy. Uh, it's easy for anybody who's a parent anyway. He said, about three months ago, my daughter went through a life-threatening operation. And the daughter uh, was very close to death. And when the daughter went through this process, I would have preferred to be on the operating table myself. It would have been easier. It was harder for me to watch her to be at a distance and to watch her suffer unto death. And by God's grace, she made it, but it was that, it was that close. And so where's the problem with COVID actors? Where's the problem with a mother suffering because her son will be the immolated victim, the Holocaust for redemption? And that's clear to the virgin from the moment she says yes. And it's confirmed to the virgin by Simeon in the temple. And so to paraphrase what happens with Simeon, Simeon's waiting, as we know, he's waiting for the chosen Messiah. Finally, finally, he sees the Messiah, the Spirit enlightens him, and he says, essentially, your child will be the sign of contradiction. Your child will take the world and put it on its head. He will turn it upside down. And you, since you're the mother of this child, your heart will be pierced. Now let's go to Calvary for a moment. When Jesus' heart is pierced at Calvary, Scripture makes it clear, Jesus is already dead. He has already said, consummatum est, it is finished. So whose heart is pierced, mystically and truly, when they physically pierce the heart of the dead Jesus? It is his mother. Can you imagine having your, your, your son killed in a terrible way and then someone come up and kick the body? As if, as if you didn't suffer enough already. And that's why the sword that pierces the mother's heart is the mystical sword that pierces our mother's heart. And that's why she is the Corydendrix confirmed in scripture by Simeon. But again, it does not stop there. We go on to Calvary. At Calvary, the Blessed Mother, as the Church teaches us, as the Papal Magisterium teaches us, at Calvary, Mary offers up her son as a victim, and she consents to the immolation of the victim born of her. Now that's from the Second Vatican Council. What does that mean, the immolation of the victim born of her? It means that at Calvary, as they're crucifying her innocent divine son, our Lady gives her second fiat, which is really just a continuation of her first fiat. Yes, because it's the will of my Father, I consent to this destruction, this immolation, this holocaust of my Son. There's something known in nature and even in the natural law called maternal right of protection. And we see this even in the animal world. For example, uh, oftentimes a mother will turn upon a natural predator mm -hmm. to protect its offspring. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderment of nature, but it happens regularly. Uh, there was a case about 10 or 12 years ago where a, uh, a young man, maybe in his, in his late 20s, was working on a small car, and it was jacked up, and inadvertently he knocked the jack, and the car fell on him, on his chest. 
His mother, who was in her late 50s, heard the scream, came into the garage, and through maternal adrenaline and right, lifted up a corner of the car so the, the sun could shimmy out. Now this is phenomenal. But this is a little dose, and she was not part of a weightlifting club on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, this is a mother's heart. This is maternal adrenaline. This is maternal right of protection. And that's exactly what the mother of God gave up at Calvary. 